Welcome today. Uh, our master class is focusing on agent and admin training for Service Cloud. My name is Barbara Tassa. I'm one of the managers here on the desk.com team at Salesforce. And my job is really to make you guys successful uh, when moving from desk over to Service Cloud. I do want to say thank you so much for joining the webinar today um, and in general considering the desk to service cloud journey. I know that it can be a little bit complicated. So for those of you that are here today and joining any of our other events, our entire team really appreciates the time that you're putting in and we really want to be here to support you to make the transition. What we're going to cover today, uh, we'll do some intros. We'll then go into um, agent views. So using Service Cloud from the perspective of an agent, uh, what you need to know, how you navigate and do your work. Then we'll jump into the admin side. So as an administrator, where do you go to set things up? Then we'll review resources that can help your team uh, be more successful in adopting Service Cloud. Uh, I typically leave plenty of time for questions and answers. So if you don't have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to stop me um, and ask, of course, you can put your question into the Q&A panel and the GoToWebinar control panel. And uh, if you want to save it till the end, definitely happy to um, unmute you guys as well. And uh, we can go through some questions. We have a pretty small group here today. And lastly, I do want to call this out. We are always looking for ways to improve our offerings and make the service cloud transition a lot smoother. So I do invite you to fill out a brief three question, only three questions, a three question survey at the end so we can get a sense of how we're doing and what we can do better. All right, um, so I just said hello before. So my name is Barb Tassa. I've been with Salesforce for uh, about four years now. And I initially started off on the desk.com team implementing customers on Service Cloud, or pardon me, desk.com. I've clearly been working in Service Cloud for a bit now. And uh, right now what we're doing is really helping our customers make the move from desk over to Service Cloud so we're doing everything from running these types of master classes where we deep dive into certain topics and um, also doing some hands-on implementations in new service cloud trial orgs. So um, let me ask a quick question to you guys as well. So as you're considering the desk to service cloud move, are you, is your team, your company thinking of moving into a new Salesforce instance, meaning that desk is the only product that you have from Salesforce and your support team is gonna be just moving into that um, new Salesforce service cloud trial that we provide you, or do you already have Salesforce at your company? And so your team is looking to move their support function into that existing Salesforce org. So um, just to give me a quick uh, vote on this poll here. Are you moving into a new Salesforce instance or into an existing one? All right. Great, so we're 50-50 here today, perfect. So we'll talk about some of the considerations for both when we um, look at agent training. Okay, great. All right, so without further ado, let's launch Service Cloud and dig into it from the agent perspective. Now, um, for those of you who are moving into an existing Salesforce org, I just want to let you know that what you're seeing may not be exactly what your environment looks like today. And so we can definitely talk about some of the differences or how to get those views um, as I am just using the customized service cloud trial org that um, you can launch even if you are moving to an existing org just to play around with this environment. So when you first create uh, this, uh, this trial org, you'll probably land on a page like this. And I'm just gonna um, click this drop down and change my view to cases. So I'm already in what's called the service console. And the service console is your desk-like environment where your agents are gonna be spending most of the time answering cases. If you end up um, launching on a totally different application and you're wondering how do I get to the service console, you get here by clicking this three by three grid called the app launcher. And the app launcher will bring you up a, um, a view with a bunch of different things, potentially depending on what you have in your org. And then uh, what you're looking for is called the service console. And again, the service console is that equivalent of that desk service application, where if you think of Salesforce as a really big platform, the different applications allow you to do different things, although the data is shared among all those different applications. So um, the first thing that we'll look at is something called list views. 
So in Desk, most people are familiar with filters. When you first launch Desk, you see a bunch of um, list views or filters on the left-hand side and then cases that belong into each of those filters. And list views can be thought of in a very similar way. I'll click on all cases first just to um, show the, the demo cases that are going to be in here. Now, the, the one thing that will always open where, wherever you navigate in Salesforce, if you are on some kind of list, it typically defaults to recently viewed. And here in brackets, we see it's a pinned list. But oftentimes I may, if I'm, especially if I'm new, I may not have anything that I've viewed. So I can actually go in here to the list view that I want and then pin this list. So that way going forward, whenever I launch this application and I log into Salesforce, I will actually see all cases as my first place to go. So um, when I go to drop down, when you set up Service Cloud, you can set it up to look nearly identical to your desk instance. Um, by creating the difference, taking the filters that you have and converting them to list views. They work in a very similar way where you have some logic that says, this is the type of case that should appear in this filter. Now, um, so when an agent first comes in here, they're probably not gonna be doing any setup. So let's just talk about what we see. So we see some case statuses, which is very much like we had in desk. We have the case channels where it came, came from, case number, contact who um, actually submitted the case, the subject of the case, and some other fields like priority, date opened, and the case owner. Now, uh, when I click into these hyperlinks, it's gonna take me to different places. So when I wanna actually look at the case itself, I'm gonna click on the case number. And when I wanna click um, to see more about Edward, this contact, I would click on his hyperlink name. So they take me to slightly different places. In desk, if I clicked anywhere on the row, it would just take me to the case. Here, um, I do have to click on this specific case number. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so it's gonna open up a new tab in the case. So if I am working on a specific filter, let's say um, as an admin, I was assigned to work all cases. I just pick up the first case that comes in. I click on that. I can see some information. I can see again the case status, that it's in a new status. And then um, that's the case path that's default. It's very similar to desk. I can see some high level case details, a number, who's owning this case, priority, status, the subject, if there's any description, agent feedback or comments. On the left hand side, I also see additional information about the person that submitted the case, in this case, the Edward contact, his email, account name, phone number, and then um, cases for parent contact are other cases that Edward would have submitted. So I can see, you know, maybe there's something similar potentially it's the same case or a completely different case. On the right hand side, I see the knowledge um, articles. So if in desk you use support articles, whether they're internal or external, that's actually what would be surfacing here after you do the, uh, the migration to pull your articles from desk over to service cloud. Um, if you don't have any desk articles today or don't plan on using them, you can actually hide this entire widget. But if you do use them, this is where they would appear. And then looking at the case itself, um, this is uh, what's called the feed-based case layout. So I'm gonna be able to see all of my interactions between myself and the customer in this area. Uh, I see interactions, emails, and all updates if there are any. So right now, there's nothing really but system updates of um, case was updated or um, you know something went to a different status. If I had specific emails I wanted to look at, right now there are none, they would show up there. And interactions would be anything else besides emails. Maybe I logged a phone call, maybe I posted something for a colleague. That's what would appear on that case feed. So if I'm replying back to the customer, I can say, hey, Edward. So I, I'd start typing in this email composer. Um, just like Desk, I can freehand write a reply or I could use some of the automations that Desk had like macros. So in Service Cloud, the macros are accessed through this footer bar here. So if, I, uh, if I'm on a case, or I do have to be actually on a case, and then when I'm on a case, I can apply one of these macros if that's the right one. And if I have the right permissions, I can actually go ahead and create new macros. Perhaps I'm one of the support leads that creates and manages the macros. Um, uh, I would definitely be spending some time in here. So that's where I can use to um, get some of those common replies out to customers. And then here I can add attachments, um, merge fields, if there's certain database fields I wanna share. 
and then I can also insert templates. So this is similar to a macro, but slightly different, uh, whereas uh, a macro can actually use a template. This is a kind of different way to get to it. And then I can also do preview email. So if you happen to use the classic email, um, the classic view of desk, it's that same feature where you can preview an email. So if you're inserting any images or text, um, you'll be able to see that. And the great news for those of you who uh, were kind of annoyed with desk not having any rich text editing, well, um, this does have rich text editing. So you can actually even copy and paste images right into um, right in here. So if I were to just give that a quick test, let's just go to Google, um, maybe Google News. Is let's just grab. Let's say if I want to screenshot something from my application. I can go right back in here. Uh, please see the screenshot. And I should be able to just copy paste that right in there. And then that could be um, anything from your own application. Maybe you need to have some arrows, you know, you use um, some editor that allows you to point exactly where the customer can go. But this is um, really handy where you can actually have all of this information going out to the customer in a rich text way. Um, besides uh, just freehand using macros or templates, there's also a feature called Quick Text. And so Quick Text, um, if, if I clicked on the wrong one, oops, I think I just fired off a macro, but let me just go back into the case here. So if I am working on a case and I want to just reply um, and not worry about any styling, um, I can actually use uh, the Quick Text, which I think is for some reason giving me a little bit here it is so quick text would be probably the most direct um, comparison to uh, macros potentially so it's just pretty much a response and then um, i can just see what type of responses there are i can also use those merge fields in desk we call them liquid variables here they're called merge fields in salesforce and they allow me to do the exact same thing so if i wanted to have anything dynamic where I don't have to retype, for example, the customer's first name, the company that they work at, or any other custom fields that I'm storing, either uh, with the case or the contact or the account, I can reference those with these, the format of the curly braces. So that is really handy if you need to speed things up and you don't want to have to you know, have mistakes if you're, for example, inserting account numbers or something that is easily um, could be mistyped. Um, so that's quick text. And so once I'm happy with my reply, I'll just sign that. And so when I'm about to send the email, it'll go back to that contact. I can add additional copy or blind copy recipients on this particular email. And then um, I can just hit send. And that will go back to the customer. It will be logged onto the case feed. So I can see that interactions, it captured this email that I sent to Edward. And then it's also going to be visible on the emails tab. So I'm going to have a great record if I need to hand this even off to a different colleague to be able to see what's going on uh, with these cases. So if I'm potentially not the best person to answer this case, um, I actually can uh, I have some tools here within my, uh, my case view that uh, I can use. So for example, we have case comment. So that's more of just say, I'm going to put a basic comment on the case. So I'll say, replied to customer, but we'll need more follow-up. So this just gets added to the case. Now, if I actually want to get help from one of my colleagues, I can use the post functionality here on the case, and that allows me to at mention anybody else that is in my entire Salesforce instance. So for those of you who are going to be moving to a new Salesforce instance, that will just mean your agents. But if you are actually moving into an existing Salesforce, that means like anybody who has a user license in Salesforce. So it's kind of nice. So if you need to work across teams, uh, you need to share information. Um, it's a fantastic way to do that. So I'll just type hi, and this is just me in here. So it dynamically pulls a user from the, uh, the system. I need help getting the product code. For this customer can you help 
So what happens is that once I post this, this goes just internally. It's using um, a feature in Salesforce a force called Chatter, where um, the person that I at mentioned will get a notification in their uh, little notifications window area here. And um, they will then also get a probably email alert, letting them know that um, they've been pinged and they can see this case and uh, provide some context. Then if I actually need to change the owner of a case, I can go in here and then change it to somebody else that's on my team um, and then hit save. And that will actually go into um, somebody else's queue. Now, one other thing I want to kind of bring full circle here is the knowledge articles. So instead of just using macros, which are really like internal macros and in the quick text and um, templates, they can be more internal. Um, so these knowledge articles could be full-fledged documentations, um, anything really that somebody else has created that provide a more comprehensive answer. So I can actually insert these into the case, um, attach this article or insert the article into the email. So very similar to the desk functionality where you had um, articles that you can attach right into the case. So this is really handy if you have a robust support center and desk and you wanna continue using those articles in your cases with customers, uh, basically allows you to continue doing that same job. All right, so let me pause here because I have talked for quite a bit and I wanted to see if you had any questions. If you do, please feel free to put them into the chat window. And if you don't have any right now, that's perfectly fine. We can definitely save them until the end. Okay, so I'll just keep going for now. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in here. Um, so if I think back to the things we want to cover on the agents, basically we looked at App Launcher, how to get to Service Console, we looked at list views, we looked at cases, we looked at sending emails, we looked at interacting with users, and then how to use backrows, quick text, and knowledge. So for the most part, this is what agents really need to know how to do when they're moving from desk over to service cloud if they're basically doing the same job all over again um, so again i got here by going to the app launcher going to the service console and then just like desk i would have some filters that i knew that i would be working from or maybe i even have assigned cases directly so i would choose the right filter to look at and then um, pick the cases. These ones are already assigned to me, so I know that I can work on them. Now, other things that agents may want to do is just personalize this view a little bit more. This is uh, a list views control feature that allows me to actually select different fields to display. So uh, one thing that is not a direct feature in Desk and Service Cloud is the use of labels. So a lot of people love the labels feature where you can have that visual sticker on top of your case. We can't really do that here in Service Cloud because labels just come over as text fields. So what we usually recommend is everybody using custom fields instead. Um, and the great news is that you can actually modify what fields you see in your list views. So that way, if there are some custom fields, uh, for example, let's say type, hopefully this is the right categorization, but let's take a look at it. Um, if I have a field called type where I store what is the reason that the customer contacted me, I should actually be able to see it here. So let me go and update that actually. So on case 1001, when I click on the details tab of the case, that's where I get access to some of the more advanced things for an agent where I can see all of the custom fields that are available, available to me on that case. So um, I can scroll down and I'm looking for the field called type. And this is what's called a pick list. So it's a drop down where I can choose one, um, one option and one option only. So if, it, if I hit save here, that's going to update and then I'd be able to see that on the case view. So let's go back to the list. And I can see that now because I've selected that custom field, I can actually see that on my list uh, when I'm looking at all my cases. The other things that agents probably are gonna to need to do, depending on how you as an admin set things up for everybody, some fields may be required. So if you do have required fields, agent won't, an agent won't be able to save the case unless they fill this out. So if you're doing um, more advanced 
uh, case management besides just replying back to customers and potentially using macros and articles to help the customer out. Um, the details tab is where your agents are also going to be spending some time. So um, they may have some uh, fields to fill out here, and then they also may uh, have additional fields that they can see um, to triage the issue a little bit further, potentially if it needs to go to another team to actually get work done. So those are the two things that an agent is going to be working in daily on the cases in Service Cloud. One is the feed tab. That's where they can do all their case management, replying back to customers. And the details is where they can see additional information and log um, the additional information that your team requires in order to be able to actually send the cases. Okay, so let's hop over to the admin view. So as an admin, um, and let me just actually stop and take a quick, I don't have an official poll here, but for those of you on, um, on the call today here, I'm really curious, are you just agents or are you also administrators? So would you need to be setting things up in Service Cloud for your team or are you for the most part end users? So if you guys can go ahead and put that into either the chat window or the Q&A panel, that would be really helpful for me to know how, how deep I can uh, go into the settings area. So I'll just take a second. Um, basically the question is, um, if you're, an, are you uh, just answering cases mostly as an agent, or do you also need to go in and actually go and set things up as an admin, not an agent here, admin. Okay. All right. See some answers coming. Admin, great. And then largely agent. Okay, great. Perfect. All right, so um, so Nick, for you, if you're mostly working as an agent, um, what we covered is going to be the majority of your of your work, just basically replying back to the customers. If your team is setting up things um, that require additional custom fields, then you'll be jumping into this details tab in the actual cases themselves. One other thing that could be kind of cool, um, depending on how much permission sets you're going to get. Um, if you don't necessarily have access to all of the data, um, you can actually do quick things like creating reports right into your list view. So rather than having to go in and switch over to what's called the reports and dashboards area, um, you can even create a new chart within the list view itself, for example, to see if this is, uh, let's say, cases that are assigned to you, you can do a, a quick chart to say um, maybe cases by status, and let's do maybe like a donut chart and then aggregate the fields. I think which one grouping field would be the status. Let's see if this one works. Cool. Yeah, so you can even create little charts for yourself right into um, the window here to see where the work is at. You can create one uh, potentially by any custom fields where you're categorizing cases. So it's a really handy way to get a good overview if you have a lot of cases in various list views where the work is at. Okay. Great. So let's then um, head over to the setup. So if you're, um, besides just answering the cases, if you also need to set things up, you're going to be very quickly getting familiar with the setup area of, of Salesforce. And how you get to the setup area is through this top right gear icon. When you click on it, you'll see two options. There's an option for service setup and there's options for main setup. So let's look at the differences between these two because um, you'll be using both. Okay. So we have service setup home here first. So when I click on the option to go to service setup, it takes me to a setup area that has on the left hand side, a searchable quick find area where most setup things are available. And then I also have these additional tiles that will help me set things up faster. So most commonly when you're responsible for setting up service cloud for your team, you'll want to make sure that you have the right users in service cloud that they have the right permissions, that you have your cases 
being created. So you'll need to set up your various channels. And then if you have a support site, you'll also need to set up uh, what's called a community or a help center in Salesforce. So this um, area, these widgets make that setup process a lot faster than just going to the main setup and we'll look at that. So this would be the main setup if I were to click set up from here. So I don't have those same tiles on my menu, but I do have a similar left hand view. So um, when I first set things up in Salesforce for the service team, I usually come here and go to the service setup. And then after the main things have been set up, I typically just use the, the main setup area. So what are the things that you'd wanna do? Um, assuming that you're moving from Desk to Service Cloud and you're also using the data migration tool, that will copy over pretty much all of the data that you have in Desk, including your users. So you may not have to come and click this button yet, uh, but if you have future teammates joining um, to add new users, you can click that, and then you'll just basically put their email, first name, last name, and what profile they belong into. The profiles is an, a, basically a, a feature within Salesforce that allows you to control who can do what, who can see what type of information. If you're adding another person that also needs to be administrating Salesforce and setting things up, you can add them as a system administrator. But if you're just adding somebody that's only going to be answering cases that you don't want going into this backend setup area, then you can add them as a support agent. Okay. Um, then there uh, is email setup. So most commonly, uh, desk customers are using email. So you have a support email that you give to your customers that now creates cases in desk. So when you're moving over to Service Cloud, uh, you'll basically hook up your support email address here. So new cases are going to start coming into Salesforce. And typically in the in the overview of like when you want to do this. Uh, you actually just want to do this towards the very end when you've set other things up. But I'm just going to show you how that works. So here you'll just choose uh, your support email address, uh, uh, support at bagelsandcupcakes.com, for example. And then I choose, am I using an email uh, based with Gmail or some other provider like uh, Microsoft Outlook? Um, and then with a couple more steps, it'll actually help you set up your email. And it is not the same as desk where you just put your Gmail password in, for example, and it pulls your emails. This actually gives you this really long forwarding address. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, let's do support at barbtasa.com as an example. And if I were to Gmail, hit next. Then I have a couple more options here. What queue I want it to go to. Um, let's just go to the cupcakes queue case origin, um, I'll just have email, and then I will um, not worry about any tasks started and I'll just click next. So at this point, Salesforce is gonna send an email to support at barbtassel.com and it will um, ask me to verify that email. Once I go into that email, click verify, then Salesforce knows that um, that's a real email address. I'll just pretend I have clicked it, but it's not gonna let me actually proceed if I haven't. So it'll say, um, I actually have to click it. Um, and so once you do that, you'll be able to go to the next step. It'll give you this long email address that then you will put into your email settings where you can forward cases and those cases are gonna create, um, those are gonna create cases in Service Cloud. So I generally leave that to the pretty end, uh, pretty much the very end. Um, and then if you're also setting up a support center, we have a couple of options here, um, also Facebook and Twitter. So if you have your social channels, this is exactly where you'll come to use a quick guided flow to set those up. Um, then you also have what's called the help center setup and then the, uh, the lightning community setup. So if you have a support center in desk today that simply has support articles for your customers to view and um, a, a contact form, help center um, should be sufficient for you. Then there's also a feature called Lightning Community Setup. So that is a little bit more advanced than the Help Center where you can still have the articles, you can have a contact form, but it also allows you to create logins for your users. So if you don't think you'll need logins for your users, you just want them to create a case and then you'll correspond with them by email rather than giving them a portal to log into to see their own cases, 
then um, I typically recommend using the Help Center setup. And likewise, you would click the flow uh, within a couple of steps. It'll ask you a few questions. And then from there, it will set up your uh, support center that then you can further customize. Okay, so basically service setup is where you come as administrator when you're just getting set up for the first time. Now, once you are set up and you wanna start doing a little bit more management, that's typically when I just start coming to the, uh, the main setup menu option here. Um, and a few things that uh, you'll, you'll see here. So let's kind of follow through in the email. So let's say I actually set up my email address so I can find things like email settings here. So I'll search for a word um, called email to case. So that's the Salesforce terminology for your support channel um, that creates cases. So I'll just hit continue. Okay, and then um, since I already tried to basically create my email address support at barbtassa.com, that's my routing address for support. It's actually given me this long email service address. And this actually is a live address, which is great because you can use it for testing purposes, but it's not like something you'd ever want to give to your customers, just for testing purposes. So you can make sure things are going to the right places. And um, if you guys all feel like it, you can, I'll put this email in here and you can send me an email and then we can see cases being created. Okay, so that's, a, for example, where I'd come in to then manage my email settings after I've set them up. If I wanna come in here and say, actually, I wanna change the routing a little bit. Um, maybe it doesn't need to go to the cupcakes queue. Maybe it needs to go somewhere else. I wanna change the email origin somewhere. Um, I wanna maybe have different support processes in the future and I have different case record types. This is where I come in to update those settings. So that's a little bit more advanced, but um, as the administrator, this is where you'll be uh, spending some time. The other thing, um, so if you already have a list of users, so you can go to the Home tab, click uh, type in users, and then this is where you will find all of your users in Salesforce. Okay, so then we have, um, that's, uh, that's my email address here. I can see my profile as system administrator. And I also have a colleague, Suzanne, in here, and she's also a system administrator. So if we have that same profile, basically means that we can do the same things. The one other thing that's different here is I have this checkbox for active. And now this is um, a big difference between desk and, and Salesforce. So once you've actually created a user, you don't ever delete them. So they always stay with you in Salesforce. But um, if you don't want them to have access to Salesforce, so maybe they're no longer an employee, you simply come into your user profile and then uncheck the, um, the uh, active checkbox here. And it's basically letting you know that you're like removing this person. So I can do that. I can also change any of their permissions and then hit save and that will deactivate them. Um, now let's say if somebody's forgot their password, they can no longer log in for some reason and the reset password functionality just isn't working for them, which it usually does. Uh, and so let's just say this person can't figure it out. You can always generate new password and uh, notify the user. So then they'll get another email to walk them into the org, uh, into your Salesforce org and uh, create a new password from scratch. So those are the probably two big things for user management that you will need to know as an admin. And then lastly, um, there are a bunch of checkboxes for different permission types and different license types. So if um, you are using the trial org, most of your users are gonna be uh, checked for the service cloud user and knowledge user, as well as flows. And if you are moving into that existing Salesforce instance, typically you're adding net new people. So you'll just wanna make sure that they have the service cloud flow and knowledge users checked and then that they're active as well. All right, so that's user management. All right, we looked at email setup. We briefly touched on community setup. Now let's look at support settings. So support settings allow you to um, have some default behaviors in Salesforce. So I'm gonna go back into the main search, uh, search area. I'm gonna type in support settings. Okay, great, support settings and click on that. 
And so this is where we control things like notifications, what are the, the main defaults you want your system to have. So if I click edit here, let's walk through the options. So um, basically, do you want a default case owner? So if nobody, uh, if you have rules and they don't assign it to either a queue or a user, do you want somebody to be the catch-all? And typically it defaults to the person who created the site. So um, you can change it. You can even create it as a queue. So that's good to kind of know in here. And you can always decide whether you want to notify the case owner or not if they get a case assigned. Um, the other things um, we have in here are case creation template, case assigned template, case co closed templates. So I typically uh, do assign the case assigned template. If you're using the trial org, you'll actually have this folder called service templates and you can use the case assignment notification template that's already been pre-built for you and just have that go out to your user. Let's see, the other things, um, if I wanna notify a case owner of new case comments, and typically notify case owners when case ownership changes, and then I do wanna see show closed statuses in the case status field. The last thing down here um, that's typically important is uh, enable email draft. So usually this is already defaulted if you are in an existing Salesforce org, just double check that. So if your agents are working on cases, you wanna make sure that their work isn't lost. Um, so you wanna do enable those email drafts. Um, and those are probably the most common support settings we ask people to look over. So just make sure you're happy with the defaults. If you are, um, hit save, and then that should be it. Um, then let's talk about object management. So um, in Salesforce, objects are different ta tables of data, if you want to think of it that way. So a case is an object, a contact is an object, an account is an object. And each of those objects will have different fields that I can um, show to my users. And as an example, um, the type case type, for example, is a custom field that is managed and it's specifically on this case object. It's not gonna be the same field if I wanna see it on the account or potentially the contact. So um, in order to kind of set my, my objects up for success or really have the right level of information, I need to be able to change all this and how to change those is through what's called an object manager. So when you go into your main setup area, you should see a tab uh, that's to the right of your home tab called object manager. And so this is a whole other menu that will allow you to change things on your cases, on your contacts, accounts, and any other standard or custom objects that you may have in Salesforce already. So the case object is probably where you'll spend like 95% of your time changing things. And let's look at what our options are. So when I go to the object manager on the cases, I can see a little bit of detail about this case object. Fields and relationships um, is gonna be where I see every single standard and custom field that is available to the case. And I can tell that it's a standard versus a custom field um, by how the field name is store, stored by Salesforce. So on uh, agent feedback has a double underscore C and that's how Salesforce determines that that is a custom field. Account ID, for example, is a standard field. It doesn't have any of the double underscore C uh, listed. So we previously looked at a field called type. So if I scroll down here, I see type is that pick list field. And then if I click into it, I can see that those were the options I had in my pick list, problem, feature request, and question. So those are kind of the standard case type pick list values. I can, of course, add new ones, reorder them. Um, that's basically uh, just like basic functionality you can have. So those are fields and relationships. And um, when you first add them, you won't actually see the changes necessarily. So if you've added a new custom field and you refresh your page, you go back to the case and you're wondering what happened to it, um, you may first just check, do you have them enabled on the case page layouts? So this is um, equivalent to if you were using next gen agent in desk and you were using the next gen agent case page layouts, which allowed you to um, show different things to different people and you can move fields around. 
So that's the equivalent here in Salesforce, where if I click on a case page layout, I can see um, it's not exactly a replica of what I see, but it shows me all of these custom fields that I saw on my case. And so if I don't want to see the type any longer, for example, um, I can remove it by just hitting this remove button. It doesn't delete it. It just removes it off of the page and puts it up here. So I just remove that and then I go up here and I should see it here. So type. So let's just bring that back to the case. And then instead of removing it, I actually want to make this a required field. So I can click on the wrench icon and then make that a required field. So let's say if I want 100% of my cases to be categorized, then um, that is exactly what allows me to do that. So agents can't save the cases unless that's required. All right, and I can create new sections. I can add buttons. I can really do a lot with this case, case page layout. Just remember to save. And then after you save, if you go back into your case, just give it a refresh once or twice, and then the changes will ripple through. Okay, so let's go to the details section and type. So now when I click on that, I get that little red asterisk. So I know that is a required field. And so I'll hit save. Um, and then that way it's going to be required. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, now you can actually create different case page layouts. So this is just one. You can create new ones. Um, you can assign them to different profiles. Um, and the other thing on fields and relationships is probably good to know if in desk you were using the dependent dependencies and dependent fields, you can actually do the same thing here in Salesforce. So you would create a new field dependency and you would have a controlling and a dependent field that allows you then to say, you know, if a level one custom field chosen is option A, then show a second level custom field with certain um, set of fields. So you can definitely do it the same way as you did in desk, which is really nice. And then um, you can also double check if somebody says, hey, Barb, I don't actually see this field. Um, I thought I had the right permissions. So you can go into the actual field and then there's a button called view field level accessibility. So you can actually create fields that are not visible to certain user types. Um, it's part of um, just some security. You can even create encrypted fields, but just know that um, if they have the right permissions, but for some reason they're not seeing the fields on their case layout, it could be that that specific field was not made visible to everybody. So you can come check that out as well. So there's a lot of power in sharing information in Salesforce. So sometimes it's a little bit um, overwhelming of all the things you can do, but those are the places I would check first to uh, make sure that they have the right profiles and then that they actually have access to a case page layout and then they also have access to the field. All right, so those are the most common things I would say you're gonna be uh, spending time on if you are an, an admin on fields and relationships and case page layouts. Now the object manager, if you need to add custom fields onto the contact or account level, you come to the same spot, object manager, and then you'd click on the account. Potentially you store information about the account value. Maybe they have a service level, um, they're a VIP. So you can actually create those um, on the uh, fields and relationships. So make sure you have that same field. And then the same way that a case has, an, has, has a layout, so does an account, so you can choose to show or hide certain fields, which is kind of cool. All right, um, then the biggest thing I would say in um, the agent or the admin view is really reporting. Um, one thing we're not going to be able to go into too much today is actually automations and running rules, um, but I will share a fantastic masterclass that my colleague Suzanne ran that is all about automations. So if you have desk rules and you're wondering how to recreate those, there's a similar masterclass where we deep dive into the topic and I will put a link here in this deck as well so you guys will have that, uh, which is fantastic. And then uh, let's talk about reporting. So reporting is probably one of the things that people love most about Salesforce. So once you have all that information 
um, in Salesforce, you actually can do something with it. You can gain new insights and you can really have visibility like you didn't before with Desk. So in Desk, if you went to the Business Insights tab um, in your account, you probably saw a dashboard that you didn't have very much control over. And I just want to say here you have tons of control over these dashboards. So I can create multiple dashboards and then each of these graphics that you see here is showing the visual representation of an underlying report. So I can actually edit, I can remove, um, I can uh, move any of these tiles, I can rename the headings, um, I can add new components if I have another report that I want to pull onto this dashboard. I can um, I can really easily do that as well, which is amazing. The other great thing about dashboards is that you can subscribe to them and you can even schedule them to go out to certain recipients. So if you can um, imagine needing to look at certain data on a weekly cadence, you can actually send this dashboard to yourself, which is really nice at a certain time. Um, the other things to note, when you first log into the dashboard, it will, it will share the last time that it was updated. So this isn't um, necessarily like a real time clock that's constantly updating, but you do need to hit the refresh button. So if you see that um, it's out of date or you're just trying to get the latest numbers, you can hit refresh and that will pull the latest numbers for all the reports in your dashboards. So let's say you like this dashboard, um, you can actually duplicate it, you can save as, and then make some edits if most of the reports are there, but you just want to tweak a couple. Um, you can also drill down into what is actually driving that report. So if you want to see average handle time for your agents, and you want to deep dive, you can click into that report directly and see any filters, any time periods, any other criteria that you have in your report that you may want to change or maybe duplicate for another case. So when you click into a report, um, this is the report summary. So I'm going to hit edit. And when I hit edit, I'm going to see a lot more options. I'm going to expand this fields tab on the left hand side. So this is going to show me all of the fields I have access to for this report. So Salesforce has a concept of report types. So I could have a case report, I can have an account report, or I can have reports that have data from different objects. And so um, if you're trying to pull data and then you're not seeing on this list, you can actually create a new custom report type. So it pulls data from the right accounts or different objects that you may have if you're using custom objects even. So it's gonna show you, um, it's gonna show you some standard fields and it's gonna also show you every custom field that you have available on that particular object. Um, so for example, if I wanted to pull in the case type that we were looking at before, just continuing that theme. So that was, uh, let's see, I'm gonna type, type here. So it's under the case information. I can grab that in here and I added it to the columns or I can add it into a different field. I can even filter to say, you know, only show me where the case type is, um, you know, a certain, like show me all of the cases where the agent said it was a problem and then I can uh, see that as well. So that way um, I can update these reports however I want. I can change the time period. I can run to see all the data. I can save and run if I want to make changes to the report. And if I don't want to save over an existing report, I can always do save as and that will um, allow me to save a new version of the filtered reports. So that is the high level of the things that I need to do as an admin. And I do want to now really pause for questions because we definitely talked and covered a lot. So I don't expect everybody to absorb this right away. We are recording this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pause and I'll take questions. I would love to learn a little bit more about what areas you would like to dive into a little bit deeper since we do have um, you know, more time to cover that. So why don't I start with you, Nick? Um, Nick, I'll just go ahead and unmute you. Um, thanks for joining our masterclass. Uh, anything particular you want to see from the agent view or admin view, perhaps? Oh, hey, Nick, I think you're, uh, I've unmuted you, so I'm not sure if you have mic, uh, a mic on your computer, but you should be unmuted.
Okay, so Nick, if I don't think I, I'm not sure if you're speaking, but I don't hear you, so feel free to um, put your question in the Q&A panel. Um, all right, I'll go to Ellen Lee. Uh, I'll go ahead and unmute you. So hey, Ellen, um, thanks for joining. Uh, I think you have a question for me. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about what you're trying to do? Okay, I'm not sure if I'm hearing anybody. Hey, Ellen, um, are you, do you have mic and speakers? Because I'm not sure I can hear you. Hello? Okay. Oh, okay, you don't have a speaker. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so I see your question is how do you, how to uh, merge email cases, which I'm assuming. So if you have two similar cases, how do you actually merge them? Um, so, okay, perfect. So there are probably three things that are very different between desk and service cloud. And that is one of the three. So there actually at this moment is no case merge feature. So thank you for asking that. Um, unfortunately, if you do get a customer sending a duplicate email, there isn't a way to actually merge those two cases. Um, you can delete a case that if it's like truly duplicate, um, but you can't actually merge them. So I would say the big differences between um, desk and service cloud are labels. Um, generally, you wanna convert those over into custom fields for better reporting, because you can't run the same automations and reporting um, in, uh, in service cloud as you can on desk with labels. So they just don't have the same functionality. And um, mer case merge is probably the second biggest thing that people are surprised about. So unfortunately, no, there's no case merge. But good question though, I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, do you have any other questions, Ellen, I can help you answer from um, the, the agent or admin point of view? All right, if there are no questions, um, I do invite you to ask them because I know this, this can be a pretty big topic. Uh, so feel free to ask if something does come to mind. So um, if you are looking for other resources just to get more comfortable with Service Cloud, just know that we do have plenty. Um, so you are here at some of our, of our regular scheduled events. So we do have master classes where we go and dive deeper into a lot of the areas. We have regular office hours that we run on Fridays. Um, so if you want to bring any of your colleagues out, if they're trying to figure things out, either from the agent or admin perspective, please feel free to invite them. And then if you're actually setting things up uh, from desk, trying to go over to service cloud, uh, we have some resources here that can give you the high level checklist of what you actually need to do overall to move. Um, if you're migrating your data, how to do that. If you're doing a community setup, there's some additional information. And then if you're moving into an existing Salesforce org, some considerations um, using things like sandboxes and making sure you're working with your Salesforce administrator uh, to make sure you're, um, you're, you're retaining the integrity of what you have in Salesforce today. Our team also has created a number of helpful setup videos that I'll share. So all of these videos on the right hand side are uh, just very short two to five minute videos that will help you do um, the things that you need to do as an admin or even just as an agent, um, how to use certain things. So I do invite you to, uh, to check those out. It's click by click and actually shows you exactly how to um, achieve that specific setup step. All right, and so that is pretty much all I had for content. I hope this was helpful. And again, I do invite you guys to fill out the survey, um, but I do have um, time if you want to ask any additional questions. Um, Ellen, um, have you has your team already made the service cloud swap? Um, what phase are you in right now? Like anything we can help you with directly or maybe sending some resources? And that, I guess, goes for Nick as well. If there's any questions, um, let me know where you're at in your set up for a service cloud and, and what you guys need to, to make the jump. Okay, you're just studying and testing it now. Okay, great. So um, are you, Ellen, also making this move into a new Salesforce org or is it into an existing one?
Okay. All right. So Nick, it looks like um, you guys have transferred everything over and you're just getting used to it. Okay, great. So if you're um, just getting used to it, fantastic. It's it's a, getting into it. You'll learn a lot more than just like some of the webinars and the things that we cover. Um, if you have any more specific questions, I invite you to join our office hours. We're happy to you know help you troubleshoot anything, do a screen share, things like that. And also Trailhead, if you um, have looked at some of the resources that are available, uh, Trailhead is fantastic. It really will help you learn anything and everything about Salesforce products, including Service Cloud, where you can do um, hands-on modules. So if you search, for example, Service Cloud, um, you'll see a number of hands-on workshops as well that you can take that um, set you up with. Um, you can even do a super badge, service cloud specialist, so you can really get in there and um, know everything and everything um, about uh, using service cloud, which is kind of cool. All right, Ellen, so you're moving to a new Salesforce org. Okay, uh, perfect. So if that's the case, you should probably be seeing um, a similar screen that I have as well. Um, with their service console, some demo cases. I'm assuming you already did the migration for the data. So if there's anything else that you need, please let us know and we can assist. Oh, you do have one more question. Okay, great. Um, is there a read only view for the agents? Uh, can you be more specific on what you mean by that? I'm assuming you're probably referring to the cases. Um, okay, got it. Yeah, so you're talking about the case um, locking mechanism that we had in desk. So we don't have that preventing people from actually writing on top of a case. But there is an app exchange um, component where you can see what's called case presence. So it'll actually show you that somebody else is working in the case. It won't make it read only, but you can um, have it where you can see that somebody else is working on it. So it's interesting that you asked that because a lot of people had love hate relationships with that feature in desk. Um, so if there's, um, if you do need that, I would say, probably the case presence is, is a good way to go. At least it'll signal to the other agent that somebody else is working on it. And if you need help implementing that, I would suggest emailing our support team um, and you can email them support at desk.com. I'll just put this in here, support at desk.com and they can show you um, which package and how to install it. Yeah, so actually I don't have it in my org. We do actually have it in our Salesforce instance in desk. So when our desk team moved over from desk to service cloud, we also had to go through the process of learning everything. And so uh, I can't show you our org just because it has customer information, but it basically will have a little heading on the case that says somebody's working on it. But it's, again, it's not preventing somebody else from editing the case. So it's not a read only in the same way that that desk was read only when you opened up a case that somebody else was working on. All right, um, any other questions I can help answer? Okay, if not, I do appreciate you guys coming out. Um, if you have any further questions, please uh, come to our office hours or email our support team. If you're looking for something that's a very specific enhancement to what you're doing in Salesforce. Sometimes contacting the Salesforce support team, which is a little bit different than our team from the desk side can help. And then how you can contact Salesforce support, just so you know, is within the Salesforce app, there's a question mark. And then um, there's some documentation here. So if you wanna just figure out how do I do something in Salesforce, um, sometimes researching the documentation here or even just Googling and um, try to find good results will help. And then if you want to create a support ticket, um, it's right here for get support. Um, so once you're logged in, you can actually create a support case that goes to the Salesforce support team um, for them to like provide you Salesforce specific information. 
All right. Well, with that, we will uh, we will adjourn for the day. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if there's anything else that our team can help you with, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we'll be ha happy to help you guys. Thanks and have a wonderful rest of the day.